Number 8. Who Fort In the River Medway in Kent, England, a circular structure sits on top of the water known as Who Fort. In the 1850s, there were growing concerns of an imminent invasion from France and the UK. Kent was known as an area that was in dire need of extra maritime defenses as River Medway was wide open to attack. Instead of building along the side of the river, they chose the existing islands that scattered the Medway to establish their new base. The military installation was constructed as a means of defense and it was completed in 1871. The fort was originally designed with two rows of guns aligned in a circle. However, due to extensive costs, only a single tier of 11-inch rifled muzzle-loading guns were built. During the rest of the 1870s, the place was used for gunnery practice. However, the war with France would never come. The castle was not utilized during the First World War. However, it was used as an observation post throughout World War II. Today, the citadel is owned by Medway Ports and it's still in decent condition. Who Fort is no longer battle-ready and the lower areas have since been flooded in order to keep vandals away, but now the base is open to the public, granted you have a boat to take you there. Number 7. Predjama Castle Tucked into the side of a mountain in Slovenia, a magnificent 700-year-old palace lies vacant and is known to be one of the most haunted castles in the world. The structure is one of the largest cave-built castles in history with the building seemingly peeking out of gorgeous natural stone cliffs. The fortress is said to have been built sometime in the 12th century, although there's no historical mention of it until 1274. The legend goes that the palace came under siege by Erezem Luiger, who was a robber baron who resembled a sort of Robin Hood. Like the fictional character, Luiger was known to steal from the rich and give to the poor. However, his attack on Predjama's royal occupants went a little too far. It's said that Luiger slaughtered the Pappenheim family that inhabited the castle at the time, and in the late 15th century, his family took their place, acting as if they were royalty themselves. As fate would have it, Frederick III, the Holy Roman Emperor of the House of Habsburg, was actually related to the nobleman that Luiger had foolishly murdered, and he planned revenge on the baron. Under siege by the emperor's forces, the usurper was trapped inside the palace. Although he was surrounded, the castle had access to underground tunnels where Luiger would frequently slip in and out of the building to gather supplies from nearby towns. The baron finally met his doom by cannon fire when he was allegedly betrayed by a servant and killed while using the bathroom a year and a day from the start of the siege. After the stronghold was recovered, the Oberberg family took residence there and the damaged structure was rebuilt around 1510. Sadly, there was a massive earthquake the following year and it nearly destroyed the whole castle. It wasn't until 1570 that the building was renovated to its current glory. The darker side of the fortress lies in its long history of torture. The building had a horrific dungeon and there were spaces built between the walls in order to brick people into the integrity of the structure. Inside the castle is a small courtroom which overlooked a small torture chamber. There's also a trap door in the courtroom that leads to a 207-foot drop into the caves below. The bones of those who had fallen down this shaft still lay at the bottom of the trap door, and it's said that the souls of these men and women still haunt Prajama Castle to this day. Visitors also say you can still hear the cries of those trapped inside during the 1511 earthquake still trying to get out. Number 6. Chateau de la Motte Chandenier A giant moat guards the 13th century Chateau de la Motte Chandenier, a castle that has survived the French Revolution, a fire, and a British takeover. In the former administrative region along the west coast of France, the palace was built by the Bouquet family in Les Trois Moutiers in poitou charentes The family of nobles had close ties to the throne, and the French king himself is who they reported to. The castle stood during some of the most politically tumultuous times in French history. The English took over the fortress twice during the Middle Ages, and it was also pillaged during the French Revolution. It wasn't until 1809 when the land and fort were purchased by François Enicard, a wealthy French businessman. Enicard was responsible for returning the building to its former glory, and he also planted a vast vineyard on its grounds. The castle was continually passed down to Enicard's descendants until it was finally given to Baron Edgar Lejeune, the Baron renovated the building to its current romantic style and he frequently held lavish parties within its walls. However, a devastating fire in 1932 destroyed much of the structure. The damages accumulated to a total of over 7 million francs and from then on the property continued to decay. The amount to reconstruct the stronghold was just too much to bear for any one individual. 
It wasn't until 2017 when a crowdsourcing campaign launched by locals and the D'Artagnan, a historical preservation company, raised enough money to save the fortress. The Chateau de la Motte Chandonnier is now owned by the 7,400 individuals who donated to the cause after raising nearly $600,000, or 500,000 euros. The palace is now open to visitors for a small fee, of course. Number 5. Palace of Sans Souci. In Milo, Haiti, on top of the site of a former French plantation, a once extravagant citadel called the Palace of Sans Souci, owned by King Henri Christophe I, now sits in disarray. The palace was built in 1810 but completed in 1813 after Haiti became the first independent black republic, and many people died during the construction. Once upon a time, the building housed a plethora of expensive parties known for their delicious feasts and dancing. The land was known for its beautiful gardens, man-made springs, and a system of waterworks. The structure had the reputation of having been one of the most magnificent edifices of the West Indies. King Henri I ruled from the palace until 1820 when he shot himself with a silver bullet after suffering a terrible stroke not long before. His son, Jacques-Victor Henri, the only heir to the throne, was murdered only 10 days after the death of his father. Following a massive earthquake in 1842, most of the building was destroyed and the structure was never rebuilt. The mansion was at one time considered to be the Versailles of the Caribbean. However, it's now just a ruined shell of what it used to be. The area is now safe enough to allow visitors, and it stands as a reminder of the luxurious post-revolutionary era. Would you ever stay overnight in an empty haunted castle? Let us know what you think in the comments below, and while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. Number 4. Pithirtsi Palace The Pithirtsi Palace in Ukraine is one of the most frequently visited castles in the area. It's located in the Lviv region, which is adjacent to the village of Pithirtsi. The land was originally owned by the Podgoretsky family, and they built a yard fit to defend them in battle. There was a large wall around the land constructed using large boulders to protect them. The plans for the castle there were not made until Stanislaw Konikpolsky purchased the area in 1633. Konikpolsky was an influential military leader and was second in command to the king himself. At the time, there were several other castles being built for defensive purposes in the region. However, the Pithirtsi castle was meant to only be a personal residence for the family. Overlooking the Steer River Valley, a site was chosen on top of the Waraniaki Hills for the new stronghold, and the project was given to Andrea del Agua, who was a famous architect. Agua, with the help of Guillaume Levasseur de Beauplan, carried out construction from 1635 to 1640. The finished palace had two levels, and they also added a moat surrounding it in order to keep unwanted guests at bay. Two large columns marked the entrance of the castle, and the surrounding land housed Italian gardens as well as a couple churches and a park full of flowers, fountains, and sculptures. The estate stayed in the Konikpolsky family until the death of the Hetman's grandson, and without any heirs, it was consequently given to the family of King Jan III Sobieski. After the castle was in the hands of royalty, restoration work began and it wasn't finished until 1680 after Sobieski had already passed away. The new owners barely visited the fortress after its reconstruction and it was bought by Stanislaw Rizuski in 1720. This man was an eccentric collector of weapons, paintings, and books. Even more reconstruction was done to the building by Rizuski's son in order to add more levels, change the shape of the roof, and also update the overall look of the interior to show a more modern style. The castle had multiple owners over the late 1700s to the early 1900s, and eventually was caught in the crossfires during World War II. For a brief period of time, the palace was used as a sanatorium for tuberculosis patients. However, there was a fire in 1956 during a lightning storm that severely damaged the integrity of the building. After the fire, the manor was either abused by trespassers or it sat completely vacant. Although the palace was in ruins, there were various historical movies that were filmed there between the 1960s and the 1980s, like The Three Musketeers and The Wild Hunt of King Stock. After the deserted fortress began to catch the eyes of more and more people, the site was considered a local landmark. In 1997, funds were raised in order to revive Pithirtsi Castle, and it's still currently being worked on today by students of a few nearby colleges in the surrounding area. Number 3. Wyckoff Castle just across the border of Canada on Carleton Island in Cape Vincent, New York, are the crumbling remnants of a haunted, abandoned villa known as Wyckoff Castle. The manor was built on a small island in the 1980s in order to serve as a vacation home for William O. Wyckoff, who was a wealthy businessman during the time. Wyckoff acquired his vast fortune by selling typewriters for E. Remington & Sons, which was an arms manufacturer. With his riches, he began construction for his new estate, however, the man would never be allowed to enjoy it. 
On his very first night staying in the castle, he suffered a terrible heart attack and unfortunately passed away. Even worse, Wyckoff's wife had reportedly died just one month before the building was completed. Ownership of the manor was passed down to the man's son who had no interest in living in the palace his father had died in. The family's riches were most likely lost in the Great Depression and the property was then given to General Electric for a brief time in the 1930s. The company planned to use the building as a company retreat, but bad luck seemed to surround the hallowed walls and during World War II the home was fully abandoned. To this day, nobody has lived in Wyckoff Castle in over 60 years and it's said that the original owner of the property still resides there today, haunting those who dare to visit. On a high ceiling in one of the rooms, the words help me are written as an eerily disturbing reminder of the tragedy that occurred there. Just as the Wyckoffs were never able to enjoy their dream vacation home, it seems as though nobody ever will. Number 2. Castle Stalker On a small island off the west coast of Scotland, there lies a long-abandoned fortress known as Castle Stalker. This structure eerily demonstrates the hectic history of early Scotland. The Lords of Lorne, the aristocratic MacDougall family, ruled the area in 1320 and they originally constructed and owned the fort. However, chaos reigned during this time in history and in a battle between the MacDougall clan and Robert the Bruce, the King of Scots, the castle underwent a change in ownership. After being defeated by the King of Scots, the land was surrendered to the Stuart family in 1388. Around the 1440s, the Stuarts renovated the fortress to its current form. The Stuarts ruled the area until about 1620 when King James IV visited the castle and during a drunken bet, the land was then given to Clan Campbell. The Campbells used the castle as a storage house until 1840 when the fortress eventually lost its roof due to poor upkeep. The amazing building on the water sat abandoned until it was bought by Charles Stuart of Akara, who performed conservation work on the land and fort. The castle was fully restored in 1965 after Lieutenant Colonel D.R. Stuart Allward acquired the structure. Castle Stalker is now under private ownership and is accessible to the public during the summer. The fortress was also featured in the 1975 cult classic Monty Python and the Holy Grail, which draws many tourists to the area. Number 1. The Spiss Castle In eastern Slovakia, a fortress was destroyed during the invasion of the Tartars and on that hollowed ground, the Spiss Castle was constructed in the 12th century which now stands as one of the largest castles in all of Europe. The fallen castle was owned by the Hungarian king at the time, and he donated the ruins to the noble Zapolsky family in the second half of the 15th century. They were responsible for rebuilding the once Romanesque palace in a Gothic style, and they also made the structure taller and sturdier than it was before. The castle was well-renowned for its beautiful architecture, and it was later home to Jan Zapolsky, the last king to rule Hungary before the Habsburgs reigned. After the change in leadership, the palace was then given to the Terzo family, who rebuilt it in a Renaissance style. The castle was later passed on to the Sackies. However, there was a fire in 1780 that caused the family to flee and abandon the land. They never returned to the site, but they technically held ownership of the palace until 1945. The 900-year-old fortress is now owned by the state and is a highly visited tourist destination. The Spiss Castle is now also a famous historical filming location, and in 1993, it was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Thanks for watching. Which one of these abandoned fortresses would you like to visit? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.